So, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, simulated reality uh, from the perspective of a programmer. Um, I've been programming for uh, give or take 10 years and uh, um, I think I have an idea how this, um, yeah, if, if we are living in a simulation, um, what, uh, what is the nature of it? And I will try to explain it uh, as good as I can. Um, yeah. Um, when uh, simulating a reality, uh, it is assumed that at least one administrator um, that is uh, writing... It, 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 it is a good assumption to say that there is a, at least one administrator that uh, code the, the simulation, uh, starts it up and possibly also maintains the simulation. Let's call uh, that person ad admin from, from that from now on. Um, the privileges of this admin is uh, fully interchangeable with our concept of God. Uh, that's a good start. Uh, then why did uh, the admin create, create this uh, a simulation in the first place? One thing is certain and that is that the simulation requires a goal or a set of goals. Because, uh, because of the fact that the admin uh, being a kind of pseudo living be being uh, and that living beings happen to have intent with all of their actions whether or not they are aware it of it themselves. Uh, so uh, that would mean that uh, there are there should be a reason for creating a simulated reality. Um, another very clear reason for um, the there to exist goals with this simulation is that the admin is um, willing, willingly wasting system resources on the supercomputer he's running the simulation on. Uh, furthermore, um, it uh, wastes his, his world's equivalent of electricity and would not be done in vain. Uh, instead, the admin probably focus his attention on minimizing the cost of sustaining it, creating optimizations and cheap tricks like all programmers uh, diligently do when creating uh, re resource demanding applications. The optimizations are supposed to go unnoticed, all for the purpose of wasting as little of system resources as necessary. Mm. There are many books describing the creator that in our case happens to be the admin. And uh, one of those is possibly the Bible. The Bible talks about a creation being done in seven days where the creator starts from creating the frame to creating light the animals and then finem, finally Adam and Eve, just like a computer game programmer would have done. The similarities are actually striking, since a programmer usually renders all of the surroundings of a, three, of a 3D environment on a huge cube. Uh, it's the first neat, neat trick and uh, a hugely effect effective one also that makes the surrounding look deceivingly re realistic from from inside the cube, which uh, I will show something here about it. Um, uh, that um, also without uh, a light source, the programmer can't see any of his 3D um, envi environment whilst creating it, so it makes sense to do that early on, just like God did. Okay, let's look at this.
possible hard lines, especially for some of the down hard some. Lines. So uh, this guy um, created a, a cube kind of, and from inside that cube you can make the you can make the it look realistic as long as you make those uh, images a bit bent. Uh, but you can have you can have it on the cube, and the cube kind of follows when when you go through the world. The cube follows uh, a person. Uh, so that's the idea of the. Um, it's called, it's called Skybox. So that's actually a thing that programmers do, just like God did. Wow, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, there's another interesting concept that frequently is reoccurring in various different. Myth mythological, um, myth mythological and creationist stories, and that is the four corners of the world uh, that is found in the Bible, uh, Old Testament book of Genesis. Uh, it is also found in Mesopotamian cosmology, also in Hinduism. Uh, uh, the sacred mountain has four sides, also in Buddhism. In fact, Earth is mostly portrayed as. Um, sorry. Uh, portrayed as a circle bounded by a square with the four corners. Um, is there some truth behind these stories? Maybe so. Um, I will now explain why four corners of the world which is the same as a square and flat model of Earth, is computi computationally more efficient uh, than a spherical model. Uh, when it's computationally more efficient, it wastes less CPU, CPU cycles. The processor has to work less on the supercomputer of the simulation. Uh, I will also explain why the memory management of the computer is advantageous for the f uh, square flat model over the spherical one. Uh, in computational heavy applications, <clears throat> the optimizations and approximations of the programmer uh, design is almost always a careful balance between maintaining a low memory usage and using the processor as little as possible. If the programmer decides to minimize the usage of the processor, it will be if it, it will often come with a side effect of increasing the memory usage. A way to explain this is that the algorithm for calculating something can almost always be modified to become quicker by having a more intelligent and larger memory infrastructure, like the code structure. <clears throat> the difference between the performance of a slow and fast algorithm if of, is often thousandfold or even more, so there are sif, sif, uh, significant incentives to put some effort into doing, into designing this part correctly. Uh, creating a simulated reality <clears throat> One is faced with many problems and areas of optimizations that is probably pretty much identical to the problems uh, programmers on Earth are faced with. So uh, one of the great challenges would be to create the graphical engine which contains uh, core low-level functions to render every object both efficiently and with memory usage in mind. So, how would the scientific spherical Earth model perform uh, as a base for a 3D graphical engine? For starters, there is one major issue that comes into attention, and that's something called the reference frame. A reference frame is the coordinate system from which the position is measured of each object. 
when a reference frame change, all of the physical for physics formulas change with it. Yeah. Uh, a common nightmare in physics is when a reference frame is rotating, which results in um, in uh, extra rotational uh, <laughs> in extra rotational terms each, uh, in each formula. Uh, this is um, spherical coordinates on, on the computer screen. Uh, actually, a, mom a, a moment, a, a movement on the surface of Earth, um, when interpreted as a spherical model, actually is a rotating reference frame, since Earth is rotating around its axis. Okay, this is quite complicated. I'm sorry about that, uh, but it's important. Um, besides that, uh, Earth rotates about, uh, around the Sun and the Sun moves in its own similar circulating movement according to Kepler's laws. So, besides being the most primitive type of rotating refer reference frame, here uh, there, ex there exist no, uh, numerous other terms um, making each formula even more complex. Uh, probably the first law you, you learn in physics uh, is called uh, Newton's second law that states that simply the force equals to the acceleration times the mass. So um, it's self-explanatory uh, that it's uh, a very, very simple formula. Um, this law also happens to be one of the most important one to experience a simulation as realistic, uh, together with Newton's other very simple laws. Um, uh, from, from these Newton laws we can deduce other basic laws and let's not do that so this is n nothing more complicated now okay it's over uh, the problem is that this very simple newton second law in a rotating reference system is becoming a bit of a nightmare okay um so where is it <laughs> there okay so here we can see this very simple law I talked about, the Newton's second law. Like the acceleration part is, is tur turning very ugly when we have a rotation in the when we have rota rotational coordinate system. And that's th this this um, complication you see here. It's actually just for uh, earth rotating. It, it doesn't account for for um, earth rotating around uh, the sun or the sun rotating around around something else. So um, th this is a mess for a programmer to, to do this. So yeah. So it's it's not realistic in the simulation. Yeah, I'll continue about this. <clears throat> So, rotational phenomena are created when, when having a rotational, a rotational reference system, okay? Um, so, phenomena like the Coriolis force, uh, centrifugal force, uh, Euler force, note that it's the Coriolis force that is said to be is said to bend shots fired from a cannon. So, um, for example, the balls on a pool table are in are actually in a spherical rotating reference system, affected by th these strange forces um, in in the scientific model of our reality. It, it is like that, um, and this is 
like if if the simulation is um, aiming to to do all of this it's it's very costly it, it can't optimize things so um, So this makes uh, computations as uh, simple pool table balls uh, bouncing around. Um, uh, it makes it Im impossibility, and it's it's honestly I would think uh, if I would look at the simulation and and see that he is simulating the pool table balls with the. Uh, um, with the Coriolis force and like how the sun moves, I would say that this is bad software design uh, and I, for, for the administrator and I don't think the administrator is that like stupid. He, the, the admin would, would, um, would do this correctly probably. It, 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 it's a major thing to simulate this. So another problem with the rotating earth and uh, the problem with celestial bodies in the space in space is the memory management of the objects uh, that always change in position. Even if you, as a person person on Earth, stand absolutely still, you actually rotate around Earth, and um, Earth rotate around the Sun, and so on. This is a nightmare uh, to the positioning system related to the memory management. Mm. Um, us uh, us uh, programmers use uh, as many neat tricks as possible to make the algorithm you are evaluating uh, to be as simple as possible and look uh, mm, to in a way as simple as possible look at a position in the memory. Um, these required optimizations that the programmer should do is simply not possible with uh, such complicated coordinate system. Yeah. Uh, to the point. Mm. To the point. There shouldn't only be incentive to opt optimize the calculations but also a requirement because of the nightmare of rotating re systems inside other rotating systems. Also the fact that the earth is uh, a closed system meaning we are not interacting with other space colonies further implies that there is no point in simulating rotating systems or celestial mechanics or planets. There's no point because we don't interact with them. There's, there's simply no point. So, so is Earth flat if we, if we live in a simulation? Uh, yes, it should be. Um, so let's, let's change image. No. <laughs> So why does Earth seem spherical? Because it seems spherical. Because there are literally thousands of implications that it, that it is spherical. I would say that all of these are just clever tricks to convince people that Earth indeed is spherical. Uh, when it really is flat. Uh, which... Um, there is actually a lot of science of there. There's there's both a lot of science for for Earth being flat, but it's also a lot of science for Earth Earth being spherical. Yeah. So I hope I'm not confusing you. Um, relax. Take a deep breath. So, why wouldn't the simulator admin just be honest about the Earth being flat? Uh, what what do you think would happen? What would happen if if we all knew our Earth was flat? 
Um, our human curi- I will tell you. <clears throat> our human curiosity would lead us to investigate the surface in uh, the great adventure of finding the edge of the flat plane or uh, alternatively for the sake of discovering new land for its agriculture or nature resources. Both, both of these um, is actually undesirable uh, for, the, for the administrator. Either, either because of simulations, simulation optimization uh, reasons or, uh, or it, it would break the original goal or incentive of the, of the admin to, to initially start up the simulation. Let me explain why. Um, so let's say every, everyone knew, knew that... I'm oh, sorry. So let's say everyone knew that the Earth was flat and that it was uh, obvious by all of the science and observations. There was, let's say that there were no signs that Earth is spherical. Uh, then people or, or even governments would invest in discovering the edge. The problem with this is that uh, if such an edge actually existed, it would have unnatural, unnatural properties to, to um, um, everything else around it. Humankind would uh, spend all eternity to either praising the edge just as a deity, as um, uh, this stage, um, and, um, and, and, and what is the point of running a simulation if, if everyone is just um, praising the edge? Um, so it, it's, it's like playing a computer game where every, everything stops and all creatures just start sitting down for the rest of the game doing nothing. So is that fun to play? No. Um, so this deity of the edge or praising of the edge would not be in the interest of the administrator. The second way is that there is, there is no edge, but that would mean that people or governments would investigate the flat plain in search of land and natural resources. The problem with this is that the increased uh, is, is the increased memory usage of the simulated reality. Besides, besides that, what's the point of experimenting on us like uh, lab rats without limiting the resources? Uh, an ideal uh, simulated world is um, therefore something that gives uh, numerous implications of being spherical. Yeah, uh, whilst in reality, it actually is, fl is flat. Now, uh, when the habitants of the flat surface is limited to a certain local area of the surface, the space outside can uh, simply, be, simply be undefined, just like in the memory allocation of a computer. Yeah, it's undefined memory. Um, now, 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 now you can remember the four corners of the world again. That uh, that the Bible and various of other religious texts mentioned. Note that it fits very well into the ideal memory allocation in the computer, and it it fits well into the idea of a simulated reality. Sorry. So, implications of us actually living in a simulated reality. There are many, many implications of us living in a simulated reality. And I'm not going to talk about all of them, I'm going to just bring up a few. And um, this video is not about that. That's something you have to do for yourself. 
but I'll talk a bit about it. So, um, now you somewhat understand what uh, the concepts and optimizations and approximations needed for creating a su successful simulated reality because it is optimizations because uh, because of the fact that it is optimizations and approximations it's it's not perfect and with every computer program especially a complicated one it could exist memory <laughs> it could exist uh, memory leaks a memory leak is in in the computer world is uh, is a result of bad programming or when a part of a program is being used in a way it's not supposed to be. Um, many of us um, free thinkers are aware of how the world is doing its best to brainwash us into certain behavior patterns that is um, both beneficial to uh, <laughs> um, that, that is uh, not beneficial uh, to, to neither us or our family or our country so what is the point of that? <laughs> the media is uh, doing its best to the media and, and uh, the entertainment industry and politicians, uh, they are doing their best to, to uh, inspire us to live in a non-virtuous, live a non-virtuous life. And that life is uh, about fulfilling our material needs and so on. Governments is suspiciously unaware about the long-term good of yeah, they don't care about the long term of their nation, long term good of their nation. Um, this could, this reminds of what could be described uh, as the Satan ar archetype, um, and uh, may actually be involved in the administrator's hidden agenda, or interest in keeping the simulation running as smoothly as possible uh, using as using minimal system resources on the computer supercomputer uh, because if we use this world in the way it's designed to be, be used uh, it makes uh, the admin confident that his program code will not behave unexpectedly because there's a risk in having this complicated simulation, like it's, um, yeah, the program can start behaving weird. <laughs> yeah, let's quickly talk about how silly the so-called world is outside Earth. Let's talk a bit about space. Why, why will I talk about this? Because, as I earlier said, in a simulation there is no point in having a universe filled with life due to the complexity of the physics formulas in rotating systems. And for some reason, uh, it is silly, space is silly. Don't ask me, don't ask me why, but uh, it doesn't help to, Im to improve its probability of being real to me. Uh, first of all, let's start with the fact that the moon and the sun has exactly the same size seen from the perspective of Earth. For starters, uh, it's impossible, uh, as you can see on, on this, uh, this uh, image here. Like, uh, yeah, it's impossible. <clears throat> um, sun is 400 times larger than the moon, exactly, and it's also 400 times further away. Secondly, the moon 
always has the same side side to, to, towards Earth uh, at the same time. It's always at the same. Um, it's always with the same side. And what that actually means is that the moon actually rotates around its own axis with exactly the same speed at, uh, as it rotates around Earth. Yeah, that's, that's unthinkable, but that's how it is. And another pla planet, Ur Uranus. Um, according to NASA, uh, NASA researchers, uh, Uranus smells like fart farts. Yeah, that's that's serious space. Serious space. Um, and um, Saturnus has a giant hex hexagon on on the North Pole. Yeah, that's quite normal, is it? Not when, not when the, not when the moon and the sun is like it is. Why, it's too much, strange things going on, and yeah, yeah, it doesn't stop there. Um, uh, Pluto actually has an image on of Pluto on, on it. I'm, I'm not. I'm the the right one is not, not the one I talk about. I, I mean, like you can see here on the left one that it's Pluto. Pluto actually. Uh, quite look like Pluto. Yeah, that's normal. And then the last thing, the pole star is actually fi fixed on, on the sky. Um, and and uh, it's one of the brightest stars. It's, it's, there's not many bright stars on the sky and like it, it's almost the most bright, almost the brightest <laughs> and um, it's kind of marking north uh, so when earth earth rotates it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, fix in the sky um, so so the chance of this randomly happening is is yeah it's quite low and and it's quite it makes space look kind of fake, you know. Yeah, that's that's how it is. It's not my, uh, yeah, not my fault. <laughs> um, maybe the admin ad administrator of this simulation got tired of ships uh, that in the previous simulation, may maybe they had too much problems navigating the oceans. So they, he had to create this star, like um, who knows? So yeah, th this is the large presentation about the simulation and why why these rotational terms makes it more probable that it's a flat Earth and like everything around it is kind of fake. Um, and there is signs of this. So, um, yeah, see you the next time. Bye bye.